All right, Todd Horwitz, thank you so much for coming on the show. I have more topics than we have time for, so let's try to get in. But there, there's just a lot of confusion and fear in the market, people's 401ks, gas prices, what the Biden administration's doing. Thank you so much for being on today's show. Stephen, it's always great to be with you and your, your members and listeners because, again, it's always nice to be able to help the average investor, the average American who's trying to figure out the way to get through all this, these turbulent times. Yeah, and they, they really are turbulent. Um, it just seems like, uh, you know, they say the dollar is up, but that's just compared to other world currencies. But it sure doesn't go very far uh, anymore. And so let, let's talk a little bit about that. But one of the big topics in the news right now is Republicans are saying, we have to revamp the IRS. The average American is paying too much in taxes. They're, they're not keeping enough of their money. Um, and they're saying maybe it's time to do a flat tax or to abolish income tax and move to a higher national sales tax. So basically, they would collect money based on the money that you and I spend versus the money that you and I make. What do you think is really going to happen with this legislation in Washington, D.C.? Uh, I think it'll probably go nowhere as usual, but I think that the idea is correct. You know, the, one of the biggest problems we have in this country, Stephen, is the, the tax code is bad. So either they have to rewrite the tax code because, you know, if you have good attorneys and good accountants, you can beat a lot of the things that are in the taxes. So even though they complain about they took away the, the housing deductions, but if you know what you're doing, there's a lot of ways to beat the current tax code because it's 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 old. It's a it should be banned and re, revamped. Or I like a flat tax idea. I think that's a good idea, except that does eliminate a lot of jobs, eliminate a lot of accountants because there won't be much of a need for that. But but overall, the sales tax, I'm always leery when it's arbitrary and, and people can raise the sales tax. You know, it's kind of like gas tax when you go from state to state. You know, they all have different amounts of taxes they charge. And so let's say they decide that sales tax is 12% and that's what we're going to pay. And then they say, well, no, we're going to make it 15%. Well, there's no way to really control that. Whereas if they say flat tax, 15% or whatever the number is, bang, that's what you're paying. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to get it. I don't like arbitrary things, especially in the hand of government. Yeah, it, like I'm trying to think of, uh, there's probably very few things the government touches that improves. And I know that there's a place where government does have to step in and protect the people. But when it comes to like fiscal responsibility, wartime, like it, it just seems like there's just, there's so much greed for power in DC that they forget about everybody that votes for them and, and, and has all this hope that you're going to be the next representative that will make change. And yet what the government touches usually goes to crap. They have the opposite of the Midas touch, right? <laughs> they turn everything into garbage. And, and of course, really, if you if you actually read the Constitution, well, I know you have, but if you actually look at it, it, it dictates that government should be run city, county, state, and the federal government was never intended to be the world's largest employer and be in charge of everything. They aren't supposed to have so much power which they do. And of course, they continue to steal our money, okay, through ridiculous programs. Every bill that is written has some trash attached where some lobbyist or somebody is benefiting it from. They really need to re rebuild the entire system and re base it back on what the actual writing of the Constitution said, because the money that we give away, the, the debt ceiling debate that's going on, right? Why do we continue to raise the debt thing? Why is government not required to live on a budget like you and I have to? We would be either in bankruptcy court or jail if we did what they're doing. And again, it's there's too much greed, there's too much power. And of course, they continue to take raises. They just took their second raise. First during COVID, they took a raise and now they just took a raise three weeks ago. So, you know, we're not getting raises. We're seeing layoffs and less jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... Uh... It's, it's insane. And you know what? It's just like term limits. If the people who don't want term limits and benefit from it are the ones in charge of voting on whether it happens or not, it will never happen. Same thing with raises. Like they get to determine their paycheck based on extracting money from the American people. 
Of course, they're going to vote to give themselves a pay increase. You have AOC. I can barely live on $200,000 a year. It's like, what are you spending your money on? Right. It's absolutely asinine. Um, let, let's switch gears to the real job situation. You know, the, the Biden White House continues to say that the jobs report looks really good. But more and more, as I dig in, economists are saying it's people taking part-time jobs. It's people taking second and even third jobs. What's really going on with the layoff situation that's coming and also the real jobs uh, situation? Well, the real jobs are, are really bad. OK, and again, that is correct. You know, there's we've lost over two million jobs, two million full time jobs since last May. So in, in, in nine months, we've lost two million full time jobs. What's keeping the number propped up is that people have to take two and three jobs working part time. And what is the big disadvantage of working part time? You don't get benefits. So really, whatever you're making, you can deduct 30 or 40 percent from what you're making for, for the benefits that you would normally get from a full-time job. And you see that going on pretty much, you know, countrywide trying to eliminate full-time employment because it does cut down on benefits, which increases the profit to the bottom line of the company. Uh, again, it's a very scary situation what they're allowing to happen with these, with these jobs and the way they're reported. You know, the jobs are reported on a report called the U3 which is a three month look back. They okay. really need to look at the U6, which gives you a more accurate accounting of what really is going on. And it does tell you that people, a lot of people have just given up, which is what, what continues to keep the jobs number lower from an unemployment status. Yeah, I just, I just read that um, 7 million men are sitting on the sideline out of outside of the workforce, which means you have all this potential skill and previous skill not adding to the GDP, not adding to the communities. And so then you, you've got companies on the one hand, they're trying to save money by having all of these part-time workers. On the other hand, that, that may be all they're able to get because somebody's already working another job and it's like, okay, well, we'll, we'll just pick up what we can from you um, work-wise. And, and it's kind of like a, a negative spiral where the two are, are canceling themselves out. And I agree. I, I think, look, you know, we're, we went through, you know, the industrial age and now we're in the tech age. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of guys that are older like me, okay, I have no, I couldn't work in a tech job. I wouldn't know what to do. I'm like, I can turn on a computer, let alone, you know, program it. And, and we don't, we, we don't do a good job at creating and training people. You know, you go back to 2008 when Obama shut down the coal mines, okay, which is fine. Look, again, whether you believe in climate change or not, it doesn't matter to me. I don't, but it doesn't matter. But even if you do, A, we're, we're burning more coal today than ever. But, but if you're going to cut that industry, you really need to educate those people first, because basically coal miners were bred to be coal miners. You know, in certain parts of this country, they never leave their state. They never leave their city. They go right from high school to the mine. And if you're not going to educate them, how are they going to ever get work in a workforce and get a real job that's going to be able to pay them enough to pay their family? And we did the same thing in the oil industry with President Biden. OK, we've eliminated all those. And those were high paying jobs, too, that they just gave up. And what have they done for it? Nothing. We're, we haven't seen any progress on green energy. All we've seen is an, extra, an enormous cost that the American people are paying to get there. Yeah. I, I mean, look at Europe. Look how much money Europe has made to go green. And it's not sustainable. And now, uh, thank goodness they had a mild winter because of Putin, you know, basically constricting access to affordable uh, and, you know, some of that's the sanctions that they've put on, um, but people's, uh, you know, their natural gas bills are through the roof, their heating bills are through the roof, uh, their electricity bills. And it's like you and I were talking just before this is like, there's just a lot of people that are struggling because their dollar just does not go as far as it used to. Um, and, and that's a shame here in the United States. Well, just one quick point. You can, when you continue to devalue the currency, which is what they do, right? The, fraud, the fiat currency system is fraudulent, okay? It, is, it gives the central banks the, the ability to manipulate and play with the currency. Add into that 
fractional banking, which allows banks to lend out, they're creating new money. Your dollar is worthless right now. I mean, basically compared to what it would buy, you know, even 25 years ago, it's worth a hell of a lot less today than it was then. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it is. Let, let's talk about, um, let's actually go on to inflation, right? Um, I, I read today that the government said uh, that people are okay with this inflation because the average cost for a loaf of bread is only $1.87. Uh, now, I, I haven't found that here in Utah. Uh, I, I found it to be closer to $4 a loaf, which is more than double uh, and and you know what's the situation like down there in in Las Vegas? Is is the government skewing the numbers and and lying to the American people? Yes, they are. Look, I buy the low end cheap. I, I buy the house brand, so to speak, right? The generic one I buy, and it's still a little bit over two dollars. But I've seen bread as high as six dollars a loaf. And what I, the other thing I have noticed, and I am very familiar in this industry, in the food industry, doing dealing with farmers is stores have reduced the size of things. So if something weighed 16 ounces before, they're now selling you 14 or 12 ounces for the same price. So it changes the dynamics. Even, believe it or not, even the ice cream bars I eat every day have reduced in size. So I'm still paying the same price, but I'm getting less for it. So they're hiding inflation through reduced sizes. And they're also hiding through inflation through just lies. I mean, let's be honest. They don't tell us the real facts and the 6.5 GDP print, not GDP, but CPI print was garbage. The 6.5 6, would be, we would be kissing the ground for six and a half percent inflation. Unfortunately, it's closer to 21 or 22. Yeah, uh, I just had Gerald Salente from the Trends Journal on my show, and he said that exact same thing. He said, whatever the number is, you have to double it. Um, and he he posited that the government is specifically lying about the high inflation so that they don't have to pay higher benefits to seniors when it comes to Social Security. What are your thoughts on why they're burying and manipulating the data? Well, that is correct. I mean, that is a good reason. And I don't have any doubt that that's part of it. But of course, when we talk about Social Security, you and I both know that Social Security retirement age shouldn't be at 65 or 67. It should be at about 80, okay? You know, again, the, the, the Ponzi scheme as known as Social Security was designed by, by Roosevelt was the average living age was 62 and you couldn't collect until you were 65. So a lot of people died paying in their benefits, which is fine. And now the average living age is about 77. So if you're gonna continue to run this, there isn't enough money in the world to continue to control this. What they really need to do is, is, is turn this over to the individual and, and force, force them to put their FICA tax, but force them to put it in their own account and let it work themselves, not let the government run it because the government continues to use that money and there's not enough of it. And of course, I'm, I do doubt that my kids who are in their 20s will ever see Social Security if this continues. Yeah, I'm I'm in my 40s and I am building my future as if it won't be there. Uh, but I still contribute about 15% in self-employment tax, uh, which is really really high. Um, but um, okay, really quickly. So, are you saying that Social Security might benefit from being privatized and run by a private corporation? Or are you saying privatize privatize it down to the individual level? Either would would benefit. Look, we know that the government creates nothing. They create debt. Okay. They don't create product. They don't create income. They create debt. And when you, if you look at the scope around the globe, around the United States, you see that all the non-tax states are flourishing. Okay. All the high tax states are struggling. Why is that? Okay. Why does Illinois, for example, which is where I live part-time, continue to raise their tax? Okay. And yet they're always broke versus Las Vegas, who doesn't have any tax and they're flourishing. Give me the difference. That's the problem. When you let government touch money, they turn it into the opposite of gold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's, it's true. And, you know, I feel bad, you know, right now uh, you have the, the media saying, you know, Republicans are trying to get rid of uh, social security or at least cut it in half or at least reduce it. 
And, and then you have former President Donald Trump saying, do not touch that. You must honor it, but you should improve upon it. Um, you, you know, you have, what, 60 million Americans that rely on Social Security, but the next 60 million, the millennials and the, the Generation X, I, I just really think that they need to be prepared that it, if it's not going to be there, it's going to be there in a very reduced form. Honor, there's no way it's going to be there if they continue on the current pace. What they really need to do is they need to raise the age and grandfather in X age, like from 30 up, you get you can retire at 65 or whatever it is, or from you know 40, whatever number it happens to be. And, and that's it. But again, they're not going to do that because it would cost some votes. Because let's let's face it, the older people still are the voters and still have the money. And that's one of the that's what always comes into play here is money, right? The world comes down to two things. One is always money. Yeah. Well, this is why somebody that I like, Ron Paul, he, he could never get elected because number one, he had the courage to make the cuts that were necessary. And uh two, he um he he was willing to basically go opposite of what Washington DC wanted to do, which is um, I, I will spend more money. We'll spend more money, right? He wanted to run a fiscally responsible government, but that doesn't get votes. And so a, a guy like Ron Paul can never win, even though he has really great ideas for running a more streamlined, efficient government. Well, that, that, that's a lot to do with the education of the average American. I agree with Ron Paul 100%. And I agree that the Fed should either be ended or at least audited. You know, I would once like to see a legitimate audit of either the Fed and the banks. You know, the stress test that they tell us, that BS they come out with every quarter. I would I would venture to say that it is garbage and that once again, when this market finally does melt down, and it will, okay, it'll come down to the United States the citizens bailing out the banks once again. And Ron Paul is right on top of it. And of course, that's how a lot of the money gets hidden and that's how a lot of it gets passed through because we have these vehicles. You know, remember, the Federal Reserve was started by probably four of the worst people in the world. Uh, you know, the Rothschilds, the Warburgs, R Rockefeller, and Morgan, J.P. Morgan, okay? Those are four people that you wouldn't want to have, you want to have your pockets sold up when you went and saw them if you had any cash or because they'd take it if you didn't saw them up, okay? Yeah. It, was, it was designed as almost a body to, to fleece the American people, and it's exactly what's going on. Yeah, it, that's a, such a great word. They're fleecing the American people. They're not aware of it, but they are just seductively stripping all that money away from your paycheck. Um, let's stay on the topic of the Federal Reserve. People want to know what's going to happen with my money market account, what's going to happen with my 401k and my IRA. We're coming up on the announcement of a new rate hike. Where do you think the Fed, where, where's Jerome Powell going to take the, the rates for the United States and really for the world? Well, there's talk that it's going to be 25 basis points. I think it's going to be 50 still. I think they are dead set on getting the 10-year notes up to 6%, okay? And I think that uh, that they're going to continue to push. Now, again, this is unprecedented hiking rates into a recession. But, of course, they left them low for way too long. You know, the free market would determine that rates are probably fair at 6%, okay? But because you had the manipulation of government and the Federal Reserve, even though the Federal Reserve is supposed to be private, you had that manipulation of keeping rates low artificially. You know, the Fed is holding on to $8 trillion in assets right now, okay? So we have a $32 million trillion deficit in this country. The Fed's got $8 trillion in basically cash in their, in their, on their balance sheet, okay? And, and that is basically how they've been able to accumulate these cash by buying some assets and by using our money to buy assets. And of course, it ties into the fractional banking. One more time, if, if a bank, you know, the, the Fed funds rate is what the Fed is setting. A bank can borrow from that rate. If a bank can borrow a million dollars, they can turn that around and bring it in as an asset, have it as a liability, but also as an asset, which then allows them to lend out $10 million, which creates more money. So it creates, it's, it's the, the ball effect of continuing to pick up garbage. So what happens is, is the Fed's going to hike. They're going to continue to hike, which is right. They need to go higher because when you look at the peer-to-peer -peer lenders uh, like Prosper and those others, they're getting in the 14s and 15% rank, all right, for, for people that go there. And credit card debt is ridiculously through the roof. And that will go higher because even though they charge usury rates, 
the the, the, the lobbyists have uh, gotten around. You can't bankrupt off a credit card. And of course, they're allowed to charge much more ridiculous rates. So anybody out there who's using their credit card should cut it down because you're paying more. You can now use like CDs now. I have some money in some three month CDs at Edward Jones at three and a, at four and a half percent. Okay. And they go four, four and a half, five, five and a half, six percent now, which is money you can get, which the, the, the firms are telling you that rates are going higher because they're paying plus market right now to get your money on deposit. Yeah, the um, I read, you know, one of the biggest drivers of the rich and the poor is the poor are forced to borrow at high rates. And, and then they use that to cover the month to month cost of living where the wealthy are able to access super cheap, large amounts of money that they put into the market or they borrow on margin. Uh, and then they they follow that Fed pushing the, the market up. And now what happens? We have this huge disparity of the rich versus the poor. It, it, it's access to really cheap money. And then the, the, poor, the poor have to use it to you know, live, live like uh, slaves or servants to the federal government and inflation rates, while the rich just continue to buy assets for very, very cheap that uh, inflate with the government and then they become richer and richer. That's why the rich get richer and the poor get poorer because of course the rich are always prepared and the rich don't get affected as much by the, listen, I took, I have two homes. I took both mortgages to the hilt when interest rates were two and a half and 3%. Why? Because I can make more than 3% with the money that I borrowed from them. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I have notes on my homes, which I could pay for anytime I want, but why would I when I can get a higher return? Hell, I can put it in a CD at four and a half percent, okay, against the two and a half I borrowed, I'm making an arbitrage for 2% without doing anything, okay? And yeah. it's, it's, but that's exactly what happens. You nailed it, but a lot of that has to do with the individual spending habits too. We spend too much, we don't have any money put away for emergencies, uh, and we're paying too high of a credit card debt, so it's hard to build an investment account for your future like you and I do, when you're spending too much on your credit card and you need to really cut your budget down so that you can get through these tough times and put together an emergency fund that you have before you do anything else because emergencies happen. And you know what? They happen at the worst possible time. Yeah, they, they, they never come when you're just like flush with money, right? It's always when uh, things are just a little bit tight. Um, okay, a couple more questions then I know you're busy and have a full day today. Uh, White House Chief of Staff Ron Klain announced out of nowhere, I'm leaving the Biden White House administration. This is the highest guy up in the White House next to the president. Why do you think he's abandoning uh, the Biden White House? Is it a better job opportunity or does he see Biden losing in 2024 or not even running? And so he thinks my job is got an expiration date stamped on it. I'm out of here. Well, look, I think, first of all, they all have a much better job opportunities if they want, right? Public servants don't work for, do it for the money on front. They may do it for the back end money, but I don't believe the chief of staff is, is, is getting any back end money, right? He's doing it because for the love of country, I think. Okay. However, I think he also sees that there's a tremendous amount of issues that are going on in the Biden White House from the documents that they're finding. And I think that now there's starting to be some pressure put on about Hunter Biden, about these documents. And I don't think that he wants to deal with these issues because this could get very ugly. You know, we have a very bad administration. I don't care whether you're a Republican or Democrat. This particular administration is the worst in my lifetime of all because there's too many America haters in there. And what they're doing is total destruction to the middle class and small business. So I think that he's trying to get in front of that and say, you know what, I'm going to get out now before it gets really ugly, because I have a feeling that this is going to get really ugly with what's going on before it gets better, okay? So I think that's why. I think it has not, uh, nothing to do with anything else but his name and where he can go later, because I think there's a lot of stench and stink around this current administration, and there's a lot of dirty things that have happened, and they're suddenly coming out to the roost, and I think this could be really nasty before it's all said and done. Okay, so he, you think he's just reading the tea leaves and they're telling him, this is about to get ugly. You don't want this, this stress and pressure. You may not have a job in two years anyway. Move on. Get he doesn't out. need the job. I think he knows. I don't think they've told him. I don't think they've told him anything. I think he can see it. Like, yeah. I think we can all kind of see it. 
although there's still the press is still kind of soft on Biden. I think we can all kind of see that there's deeper stuff down there. And and with you know with media today and with the way that we can communicate, it's awfully fast to get something bad out if they want to. And I think that is about to come. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for taking time. I know how busy you are because we have to schedule these in advance. And I just really, really appreciate it. If people want to learn more about you, your 40 years of trading experience, what's the best thing that they could do? They can email me direct at bubba at bubbatrading.com or look at my website at bubbatrading.com. And listen, listen, Stephen, you do a great job at helping educate investors that aren't savvy, that have not maybe been around a long time. You got to remember, just don't get yourself too deep in debt. The, the worst thing for everybody is debt. You got to try to stay away from debt first you, and pay yourself first every month. OK, so if you got to cut down one Starbucks a week or whatever you do, I tell my kids the same thing. Stay, have one less beer when you go out, have one less Starbucks a week. You can put away a lot of money. You have to be able to defend yourself in the big picture before, because, again, that emergency is going to come and you're not going to have the money for it. And then that, that starts the ball rolling with credit card debt and all things that you just can't ever get out of. Great. Thank you so much for your wisdom and for your time. Thank you and have a great rest of your day. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it, Stephen.